Depending on the project that you're working on, you may have more materials than other. If you're editing a wedding video, for example, you may have a general schedule that was given to you of the events that are happening. And as an editor, you may be able to follow those uh, various events that happen. For example, you know that a wedding ceremony happened. Maybe you know that these certain speeches happened or someone played a certain instrument at some part. You have a general idea of what happened. In this case, I'm actually working on a short film and there was a full-on script to this project. And that's something that's really cool with the footage we get from editstock.com. You will actually get all of the notes and the paperwork that was included. And with Final Cut, I'm actually going to go over to the right side and resize this window. And you can see I have the PDF open for that script. And this can be very helpful to organize your content. So we saw in the last video, there were keywords that were applied to all my clips with these numbers representing each of the scenes. However, I see scene 000, 001, there's not a 002. So it's not exactly helpful to me as an editor. So I can actually go through here and look at the script and compare that so I can relabel and rename these keywords. And looking at the script, if I click on the first page, if you have any experience with films, you'll notice it's formatted exactly how a script is. And scripts will show the scene number, and usually the scene name will be bolded for where this is. So for scene one, it's the interior office day. So I'm actually going to click on my 000 keyword here and look at what we see in this keyword collection. And there's some sound effects. I see some of the clips listed. Uh, all of them appear to be in the office. There are all these close-ups for the office work. So I would say yes, all of this is going to be scene one. And then on the keyword itself, I'll click on it uh, twice and it, we'll call it scene one. If you wanted to, you could even go through and add in scene one interior office day from the script. You are the editor. You can determine how you want to organize everything. So I know that's all scene one. Then if I look at 001 keyword, all of this is also inside the interior office. And if I looked at the script over on the right side, I can see and read through that and understand that, yes, all of these clips are part of scene one. So I'm actually going to rename this one scene one as well. And by doing that, when I hit return, it might be hard to notice, but you'll notice I don't get a second scene one. It just knows that, okay, you wanted to merge everything into that one scene. And if I scroll through this scene one uh, keyword, I have to click off and back on it. There we go. Now you can see everything from that scene one, both the close-ups of the different office things, along with the clips that were recorded in the office itself are now part of this scene one keyword. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to scroll down on the script on the right side here, and I can see in uh, scene two here is the exterior of the cityscape dusk. And I don't see a scene two uh, keyword so that might be part of my unsorted keywords down here. And I can go and I see I have some moons out here and I have some time lapses and might be part of this time lapse that's gonna be that exterior shot that we're using. So right now I don't have anything that's gonna be our scene two keyword. So I'm gonna skip that one and go to scene three, which is the interior, interior office night. And here we are, I can definitely see these are night interior clips. If I read through the script, I can see that uh, Ralph, one of our characters here, he grabs his wolf head keys, which is exactly what we're seeing there in the viewer. So we'll just rename this keyword to scene three. And then hit return, that locks it in and, and relabels that. So now we see scene four is interior hallway. If I click on scene four here, looks like that's the interior of the hallway. If I look through I can see the uh, script, what they're reading. If I go through and play these clips just using the space yeah. bar. It distances you from people. Yeah. yeah. And you can't, can't keep them forever. It, so I can hear there one of the lines that was said, it distances you from people. I can see that here. Simon is saying that in scene two, in scene four. So that's all of this. So I'm just going to relabel this keyword, scene four. And yeah, this might seem really tedious, right, what we're doing. But this is a way of us organizing our content so it makes more sense for us as the editor. 
So now the next keyword is scene 5 and scene 6. So if I look at scene 5, I can see interior elevator lobby night. And then scene 6 is interior elevator continuous. It's actually all part of that same clip, same scene. They've just broken it up in the script. Um, and if I scroll through here, I can see all that looks pretty good. This is when he has a, he actually has a weird um, flash to him eating this this woman here because he's a werewolf. It, it has him uh, biting into her. So um, that seems to be all part of scene uh, five and six. So I'm going to hit return and I'm going to call it scene five dash six, scene five and six. Cool. So that's five and six. I'll scroll down until we see the next scene in the script, which is scene seven. I'll click on scene seven. This is the underground parking lot. And looking at all the videos with the thumbnail view, I can see all of that looks like it's in the underground uh, parking lot there. Except maybe this clip with the lock. I'm not really sure what this is a part of. So those clips might not be part of this scene because it looks like he's locking maybe inside of a house, which is in a later one. So these clips, I can actually command click on those. I'm going to use command K to bring up the keyword selection. And uh, I do notice that it, we have a uh, scene seven is the only keyword that's listed here. So actually for now, I'm going to delete scene seven and I'm going to put this on uh, oh, 13. I know there's not a scene 13 right now, but just, I'm going to create that keyword to put them over there um, because I know it's not part of scene 7. It doesn't look like it's part of that one. Uh, but then look at the rest of the clips. Looks pretty good. That's all interior. This is scene 7. So I'm going to rename this scene 7. Hit return. It puts it down for scene 7. Then looking down, we have scene 8, which is an exterior of a cityscape at night which looks pretty good. This is all the cityscape uh, headlights of urban traffic. Looking at the script, yeah, that seems all pretty good for scene eight. Next, we have scene nine, which I can see is the interior of Ralph's car at night. He has some weird flashes in this one of him transformation and eating the kids, and so they're all a little, little gory there. So yeah, this is scene nine. We'll look at scene 10, which is the exterior of his home. All looks pretty good there, right? So that's scene 10. We go down to scene 11 here. Scene 11 should be at Ralph's home. And this is an interior of his home. This is where the party happens. And this all looks pretty good. And actually, looking at scene 11, we can see one of those lock clips is down here. So I'm going to go back to my two clips here that were in scene 13. I'm going to select them, do command K to bring up the keyword editor. We know this is not going to be this one. So this is actually going to be scene 11. So I'll do 0011 because that's currently our the keyword we're using. And if I look back at scene 11, there's those two lock shots. If I go down here, I can see the other one that was being used. And it makes sense. It looks like he's kind of got like a hairier arm there, yeah. He's got the more werewolf-looking one, so that makes sense that this is happening in in scene eleven. So we'll change it from we'll change the name here to scene eleven. And then our last scene here is where everyone's already been eaten. Let's see, scene twelve, interior of Alpha's home, post credits. So yeah, this is the after credit shot. This is where we have a a bloody victim here that gets pulled away from the shot. Uh, gets slid out at the end there. So that is our final scene after the credits, which is going to be scene 12. Cool. So now uh, I know scene 13, that keyword is no longer needed. So I can just select that one and use command delete to remove that keyword and get rid of it. But now look at our scenes, right? We have scene one, three, four, all of them, all the clips are, are organized pretty well here into the different scenes using our scene number. Uh, keywords that we've added. So that's one way to organize and group your clips. This is seeing it more in a real-time fashion. You can see that didn't take me too long to organize those into those different scenes because everything was labeled correctly. So 
um, definitely go through, take some time to organize your clips because these groupings are going to make things really easy to go through because you're going to only be looking at a fraction of eclipse instead of all 517 that we had. We're able to go through and select a scene and now we're viewing 63 items for that scene instead of 500 uh, different clips. And then our, as far as our organization goes here, just as a, a final recap, we resized the Final Cut window so that we could see our script on one half and the browser on the left side to be able to organize. So this is using just preview as a PDF of the script. You might have an email that you're following with notes for other things down the road. Uh, don't hesitate to resize and rearrange the Final Cut windows so that they can better work for you. In the next video, we're going to start to break down some of these scenes and find our favorite and re reject some of the worst clips so that we can actually start organizing this content down even further than we have so far.